Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be painting this Death Corps of Krieg infantry model here in kind of a new series in which I'm just going to be painting models in between my large terrain projects that I'm working on and hopefully show you a few techniques you might be interested in or maybe just give you something nice to listen to in the background while you're painting. But anyway, sit back and hopefully you will enjoy this painting process. So with this model, I'm going to be experimenting with some wet blending. I haven't done much of it in the past and I feel like these models are great for it, especially these trench coats because they have lots of like large open flat areas where I can take time here, take in some intermediate blue by Vallejo and mixing it in with this tire black by uh, Secret Weapon Miniatures, which is this really cool greenish blue black which i think really gives a more interesting look to your black clothing and armor than your traditional flat blacks so i'll be using these two colors to make a kind of dark bluish gray trench coat for these guys and so for this technique i'm not really watering down my paint at all i'm pretty much taking it straight out of the out of the dropper bottle and i am taking it and i'm mixing them together i'm starting at the edges with the uh the lighter intermediate gray and then I'm taking that tire black and working it from where the shadows would be into the intermediate gray to blend in the colors and one of the things I've begun to notice with wet blending is I feel like it works better at least for me when I actually go from the shadow and wet blend into the highlight I know some people do really subtle wet blending and they go they wet blend their shadow into their intermediate into their highlight uh, but for me, I felt like I couldn't really tell a difference in color. The, the blends were actually too subtle when I did that. So by going from shadow to highlight, I felt like at least there was some contrast. It looked like there was uh, highlights when, when standing back from a few feet. So as I go around the model, I try and test and see how close I can get the wet blends. See here, there's all these small little folds, but I'm still putting down some tired black, working the intermediate blue into it and trying to still wet blend even though I didn't have much territory to work with. And God, I just love these models. And so incoming from historicals, these guys are just so thematic. They feel like a World War I era model. And these are the guys that really got me into 40K. I was always into historicals. I was always into especially ancients. And I saw these guys and I thought, you know what, if I want to dip my toes into 40K, it's going to be with these guys. And I really never looked back after them. So they have a they have a special place in my heart. Now we almost have the cloak done and I spent more time on my cloak, as you'll see, than anything else. Because I'm going for tabletop quality here. Because when you're painting Imperial Guard, if you try and go with your highest quality paint job on each model, it will take you five years to complete your army. So what I'm doing is an age-old speed painting trick of, okay, decide what things on your model are going to catch the eye, what things are emblematic of your army in general. And for Krieg, it's the trench coats and the gas masks. So that's what we're going to spend our time on. Where we'll spend a lot of time blending, making sure those look good. For everything else, we're just going to put down some quick layers, some washes, and call it a day. Because no one's going to be looking at this guy's belt or his little uh, stockings for his uh, for his boots. No one's going to be paying attention to that. So, so here I'm going back with a little bit of a black wash, just applying it to some areas in which uh, my blends were too subtle. I couldn't tell much of a difference between the highlights and the lowlights, especially in the folds of his trench coat. So just giving it a little watered down Nolan oil to help bring out those transitions. So with the trench coat done, we're going to do the rest of the model pretty quick and dirty with just some layers and washes. Kind of call it a day. And I kind of find it interesting as I'm watching myself paint this model that even though I'm going for a pretty quick tabletop quality model. This is still much higher quality than my average historical model would be. Something about uh, psychologically knowing that you have to paint 300 models maybe for the historical army makes you cut some corners. Whereas even though, you know, an Imperial Guard army is, is considered a horde army in 40k, it's still only like 80 models. So I am spending a little bit more time I find on making those little subtle highlights and things because, you know, at the end of the day, 80 models is still manageable when you're coming from other kinds of genres of tabletop wargaming. So we got the layers complete. Now to hide the rough layering, we're just putting down a watered down Agrax Earth Shade to give it kind of this dirty gray look to his pants and help blend in those highlights and lowlights. 
that's another trick that I love to use when uh, when trying to paint paint a little bit quicker than I normally would. I love using washes and almost almost thinned out to a glaze. And they're really good at hiding quick paint jobs. They sort of blend for you. One thing about Krieg, how you normally would paint them, especially if you see art dealing with Krieg, is they're so monochromatic. I, I, I always feel like I need a little bit of a pop in my model. I need some sort of color to catch your eye. So I like to paint the cuffs of their jackets and kind of the way that they fold back their trench coats here too. I like to paint that another color, something that'll catch your eye. So here, I'm gonna paint it a red. And I'm gonna start with Black Red by Vallejo. And then I'm gonna start wet blending in here, just plain, clear red, just taking that black red, working it into that much lighter, clear red color until I get a nice subtle transition between the two. Again, these models are fantastic, I feel, for practicing wet blending, which really is a technique that I wish I would have started using earlier. I was always very intimidated by wet blending. It, it seemed like something that only the pros could do, but I've really found with a little bit of practice, I'm getting some pretty decent results with it. So if you haven't tried wet blending before, just try it, you know? The worst that happens is you have to paint over a model. With the red done, we're moving down and I'm putting kind of this nice dark yellow color. I want this to be like a, uh, like these sweat stained linen socks. I'm going with tan yellow by Vallejo. And I'm gonna get a buff color and go over it, highlight it, and then I'll put another wash over it to again hide those messy layers. It will look like a guy that's been wearing his socks for a week straight. And the detail on these models is so fantastic. Usually when painting rank and file troops over and over again, you, you you start getting a little burnt out with these guys. I never really get that feeling. They're kind of like the Death Guard. I really like painting Death Guard because every model has some sort of weird tentacle or some strange mutation coming off it. It makes them all feel a little bit different. When you're painting rank, rank and file infantry. It can be tedious, especially doing kind of an assembly line kind of deal. But these guys, man, just the detail, the posing is just so good. And now we're going to his gloves, and for his gloves and his shoulder pads and his face mask, I'm going with kind of this off-white color, kind of almost like a bone color. Um, again, I, I'm looking for some contrast here. So we got the color pop with the red. I want the white also to stand out pretty starkly against uh, the dark trench coat. So here I'm using bone, by, bone white by Vallejo, layering it on. And then I'm going to take ivory, and I'm going to wet blend that into first the shoulder pads and then the hands and here I highlight the mask by kind of making streaks running alongside each uh, each side of the mask to make it kind of look like it's ribbed or has some folds easy way to highlight them quick and simple and now we're highlighting his hands with the ivory and even with a little bit of pure white just to make sure you get some nice contrast on those fingers and here I'm just going to be Painting his gun here with Gunmetal by Vallejo and coating all that. I'm going to then go over it with actually just a regular gray, just kind of dry brush it almost, uh, just to bring out a little bit of highlights on the weapon. Then I'm just going over with the Nuln oil on the steel parts. So I'll go back and highlight it with a little bit of Vallejo silver. Then I'll pretty much have the, the gun done. So what I like to do with these Krieg guys is on the last guns, they have like almost the plasma vents you see on 40k plasma guns. So I go in with some turquoise blue, and then after that I take some of that turquoise blue, mix in a little bit of pure white to give a lighter turquoise color, and I kind of go along the middle sections of the areas I just painted. Then I put a little bit of almost pure white in the middle of that area to give it a nice blue glowing effect. So here is my finished Death Corps of Krieg infantry model, and I'm pretty pleased with how he turned out. I think the wet blending looks pretty good. I'm getting better at it as I've been practicing more. And I especially like that Tire Black by Secret Weapon Miniatures. First time I've used it, it's a really interesting color. I think I'm going to use it for all of my Krieg going forward, making that nice dark blue-black trench coat. I really thought it turned out well. Anyway, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit a like button. Give me some comments down below if you have any questions or critiques. Hit the subscribe button, and I will see you all soon with a new video. Take care.